So let's welcome everyone to my first ever class. So this is a series of five PowerPoints. Um, each week I'll be looking at, basically we're going to be looking at tolerance, acceptance, and our, our Jedi's duty to you know, the communities that we are supposed to serve. Um, so this one is going to be focused around the LGBT community. Now, on the next slide, um, let's look at what tolerance is, you know. Um, so tolerance, um, as quoted by the Jedi Compass, um, you don't agree, need to agree to someone's religion, their nationality, their career, choice, address or anything else for that matter. Tolerance is not an agreement. It is about showing respect for the freedom of a person's choice and to respect their choices and that reaches a point at which a reasonable person would consider the individual's actions emotionally, spiritually, financially or physically abusive threat to you or another person. Um, if we look at the next slide, There's some examples. So the idea of being tolerant of one's religion, being tolerant of one's skill set. Um, you know, if you are working with people who may have some difficulties with their work, or you know, are very quirky and have a very loud personality. Um, again, there is pretty much the idea of we should be, to you know. I, you know, it's not about being tolerant because you should still be accepting of that person. Because uh, again, I, if I think about tolerance, my mind always thinks about you can tolerate someone's habits, which could be slightly annoying, but that's just who they are. Because the idea of tolerance is that there is nothing we can do to change it. Um, but again, there's times where we shouldn't be tolerant, but we should be more accepting. Um, and over the next couple of classes, um, we're going to be looking at this idea more. Um, but tolerance doesn't always work. Um, if we go into the next slide, you know, a lot of workplaces will often now have zero tolerance. So they'll talk about that, you know, work workers have the right to do their work in peace without abuse or discrimination or harassment or violence. Um, and a lot of workplaces all put zero tolerance in place. So the idea of tolerating everything will always work. There will be times where you shouldn't tolerate things. Um, probably the best example I can give is if you are working with, say you're working, say in your office or your work area, um, you have your group of friends, um, you know, your colleagues that you get along with, and you get someone new starting in. Um, they're, you know, they are un a unique, unique individual. Um, maybe they are gay or they're non-binary, you know, transgender. Um, and your colleague makes a comment that makes the new colleague feel uncomfortable. Um, there was a time where you should not accept that colleague's comments and, you know, you should be able to speak to them and almost call them out on that. Um, again, this is something that's going to be covered more in the next lesson about the dangers of tolerance. Um, tolerance isn't always bad. But it's about knowing when that the time and place to be tolerant. Again, you know, you shouldn't be tolerant of someone's sexuality or religion or viewpoints. You should be accepting of them because if you're accepting, you're creating that positive, safe space for them. Um, and, you know, if you create a space where they feel like they can be themselves without fear, of discrimination, or hate then you're creating a loving, positive atmosphere, which as a Jedi is something that's really important because as a Jedi, we talk in the community about helping other people and also helping ourselves. Um, 
and so on. So it's very much, again, if you tolerate something, you know, it should just be minor things. Like maybe if your colleagues can be a bit slow sometimes or a bit lazy, um, but if he does a good job, you know, it's about tolerating maybe a small bad habit because at the end of the day, it's a small habit they may have, but it's not, as long as it's not a danger or as long as it's not bringing your, you down or anyone else down and it's, it's not a toxic trait, then it's not an issue. Um, you should be, overall, we should be more accepting of other people and you know, their origin, their lifestyles, their, you know, as long as there's no danger and there's no, they don't break any laws um, or they're not um, bringing a toxic environment into your life, then you should be more accepting of who they are. Um, next slide. So I'll have a little discussion um, and I'll try my best to answer any questions you folks may have. Um, but this is kind of just a basic intro of the idea of tolerance, you know, of how tolerance is basically something that we have in the community. You know, we've talked about it. We have a quote from the J Compass and we've got a good idea of where it is but I feel like in this day and age, we should be looking to become a more, we should be looking to be more accepting and, and what that actual acceptance means and how you can do your duty as a Jedi to helping others, which again, hopefully it's broken down. But I mean, to tolerance itself is this one, this, less, this slide and the next slide, I'll break it down even more. Next slide, I'll break it down even more, looking at more, the more the danger side of tolerance. Um, so, yeah, that's, and then, so this, this was just kind of a bit, bit of a basic intro. Um, do you guys have any questions? I don't have any questions. I thought this was going to be a little bit longer, though. <laughs> you didn't tell me it was a few weeks long. We should have discussed that. No, oh, I, yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. I thought Satanus did tell you. No, that's fine. Because um, I made five slides and I was going like, to teach it over. And it wasn't, so I wasn't going to teach. I don't want to just teach the entire thing one night. Right. No, that's, that's understandable. So, more people, and then I was gonna, yeah, that's such a. So, I guess I'll open up a question for the group that's in here. When you guys think about intolerance in the Jedi community, what do you see? Mike, you wanna weigh in? Um, well, I can't say anything too, too much, really, because my um my experience of the jedi community is very limited so so i can't i can't speak about the the jedi community as a whole certainly i can speak about society of where i live but but not not the the online jedi community okay well that's fine well what are things of intolerance that you see in your community well within i live in um I live in a, a small city of Tria um, in Italy, quite a small city of it on, on, in Italy. It's a border city. And within this border city, there are certain intolerances in general to people who seem different from the norm, let's say. And that difference may well be um, a difference in culture. It may well be a difference in skin tone or a difference in sexuality. But it, this is specifically where, from where I'm living because I live in quite, a, let's say, quite a, um, a, a small city, border city in Italy. Uh, 
You want to say anything about that, Ahsoka? Um, no, that makes sense. I get obviously small communities can be very. Um, I'm from a very small community back home, and to the point where I've seen people be quite homophobic of the sort of very again. Uh, you try. Uh, hold on, you're breaking up. Am I? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, if the, yeah, so basically when it comes to small communities, I would definitely understand that it can be a bit harder being an ally because it may not always seem it, like there may not always be the best opportunities. But again, I think it's if you know people who are and you can be supportive, that's great. Um, or again, even if you have educate yourself on important issues. Um, I mean, right now it's Pride in the UK. So it's a great time to kind of learn more about. Because again, again, a lot of people will relate with their sex, with like the LG, LGBT community or just um, different sexes, different races. Um, you know, people ha will always have the nicest experiences, especially if they're, they, they are almost the people, like the, if the, I don't want to say odd one out, but if they are, if, 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 if they've got something that makes them stand out in the community, then yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say on that. So Ahsoka, uh, when you think about this from the, from what you hear of what's going on here in the U.S., because obviously you're not from the U.S., uh, you live in Cardiff? I live in one of the most diverse cities in the UK. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so you live in the UK, I live in the US. Um, obviously, when we look at what, what each other has to say, uh, I'm not gonna lie, when I think of the UK, I think of you guys as being more accepting until I started hearing stories that you had. So I, I'm curious, uh, and I'm not. that's not to say that you, that the UK is more accepting than the US per se, but it is more accept or it's less accepting as I thought it was. Did that make sense? I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always assume um, that the United States is kind of behind culturally <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in many, many regards. Um, yeah, and I live, I live in Iowa which um it which is considered a very conservative state um, and i live in a small town and i work for a very liberal college and so we have this very interesting division within our community of nine thousand people um where some people are, are very aware very accepting um, some people are very intolerant um the challenge for us is that it's often it's often very hidden. I mean, I hear, especially from my students um, who are not Caucasian, um, of, of things that are said to them as people drive by. I mean, it's, it's a very cowardly way of, of, um, of stating your opinion. <laughs> And for some, you know, eighteen-year-old from from you know China, walking down the street, and you you drive by and you shout, you know, negative terms. So um, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes to to work as an ally here because there there's so little that we see, um, and we can be supportive of them after the fact. But it's a bit of a challenge to to intervene at the moment. And in the United States, I don't know anywhere else. Um, We've got this interesting, um, I, we call it identity politics is the, kind of the frame that's being put out there right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's an interesting odd chain. So if you support you know, one thing that is the conservative milieu, you feel like you have to support everything else in order to retain your identity. So you, you may not be 
you know, anti-LGBT or you may not be anti-Latina. Um, uh, but if you want to be a conservative um, regarding, you know, maybe um, fi finances, you know, a small government, anti-spending, you feel like you have to kind of follow the whole rank and file in order to retain your identity. And, and that I find very odd. And it seems like it's, it's become more and more a case. And, and you got to polarize to one side or the other in order to maintain it. Yeah. yeah. If you start talking to people about what they really believe, you find out that they don't really believe it, but you know, they're going to keep jumping on with their friends on, on that side. So interesting problems. So what about in the UK there, Ahsoka? How do you see in comparison? Yeah, it's very weird because it depends on where you live. Um, so the town I'm from in Scotland, um, I know people who cross the street from my sister because she's lesbian and they think they're going to catch the gay off her. Uh, like they're going to be automatically pregnant if they're biologically or they're, they're cisgender male? Like, because you know, the pregnant woman's across the street from them, kind of catch it. Um, oh, okay. So, and then I know people have been jumped before for being gay or being trans. Um, like I say jumped, so basically that means like attacked outside. Right. Like uh, from like a night out in the town. Like go, I go for a few drinks and come home and they've been jumped on the way home for being gay. Um, so, but again, in some cities like the one I live in, we are very accepting. You know, we have a lot of drag bars and stuff. We have a lot of gay clubs um, over here as well. Um, Soho's got a few gay bars. Aberdeen's got like one gay bar, I believe. Um, which is like gay, gay bars are quite an important part of, because it's not like, it's, it's like accepting the culture behind the LGBT community, the music, the lifestyle, the, uh, it's, you know, it's not like a place where you, you can be gay and well tolerated because it's the law, but it's about giving them, giving people a safe space, um, giving them a place where they can meet like-minded individuals. Um, again, that's very much a big part of this is you know, you know, if you tolerate someone because it's a law or it's just the rules or, um, or you can't say that, you know, because uh, peace, yeah, it's, it dwells too, not too much of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Dwells too PC um, or ever, you can't offend anyone. Um, it's not about that. It's about, you know, if, you're, if you've got that mindset, then you're not, you're tolerating people, but you're not really accepting them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the UK, some places are better accepting, some places just tolerate it, and some places really are slightly homophobic. Again, I've had homophobic comments on my face before in a workplace. Um, so, and was that before you came out? Um, no, that was after I came out as non binary. Okay. I changed my name. Wow. So uh, we live in a time where even though in the law, because um, again, UK law is quite slightly further ahead. Um, we do live in a time like I, even though I can go get married with my part, like I can go get a husband, get married, their house, maybe adopt. I don't actually know. I know it's. I know it's still slightly hard on gay couples adopting. Um, but at the end of the day, not everyone in in society is accepting. Mm. Um, but it's very much like I mean, as Jedi, you know, we stand up for ourselves, others, and we try to do what's right. So, you know, if you have a chance to step in, then do it, but don't step into every single thing. You know, think about, think about the situation you're in, uh, make an assessment 
and decide whether or not you can help or if you jump in, will you be making it worse? Yeah, making it worse. Um, you know, or sometimes it's even just, you know, a colleague could be your friend, but, you know, if if they say something and then you try and talk to them and they just ignore you, um, or you don't feel like if you talk to them, you'll get, or that like them, they might be a con- they might be horrible towards you, then you just might have to, t- you might just have to report someone. Um, which is a, it's, it's a very hard thing to do, but, and it can, it can go down, it doesn't always go down well in a workplace. I've done that, I've had to report someone and it didn't go down well. Um, but at the end of the day, that colleague will no longer make those types of comments in my workplace. Hmm. At least not while on shift. Um, but it's about doing what's right. Because as a Jedi, you should be aiming to do what's right. What about you, Fernando? Like, eh, gosh, I can't talk today. Fernando, you're willing to speak. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Is there anything you folks would like me to talk more about in the next couple of months? Um, when you're talking about being accepting, um, it helps to kind of know what what that actively looks looks like. Yeah. I mean, no. what, what would be what would be helpful? I think that communication. Um, I know that one thing I've really learned, which was a, a good one, was instead of saying, "Oh, I'm sorry, I got your pronoun wrong." it would be just to acknowledge, okay, thank you for correcting me and then just moving forward. So I, I think that there would, it would help me to know some communication. Yeah. Cause I mean, that stuff I can easily look at for the next couple of PowerPoints. Cause I didn't realize this was gonna be all one night. That was my it's bad. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. Like, sometimes was yeah. I thought he explained it. I explained it to him. Um, but yeah, no. Over as I said, so like next one was gonna be like the danger of tolerance. Again, it's gonna be looking at comment. Actually, yeah, the next one will be explaining more about what have kind of comments and even jokes that will are actually offensive, but you may not ever come across us. And then the one after that will again be talking more about acceptance, what is acceptance, how to be how how to be accepting. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, no. Um, would anyone like to add, add anything? So I did want to read off what Fernando said. Um, he said that he can't really speak right now, but most of the time intolerance comes from incomprehension, which is yeah. hard to exchange in English. So uh, my guess is that incomprehension, it probably means probably means a little bit more in Spanish. It's Spanish, right? I hope it's Spanish. <laughs> I hope I don't get that wrong. I was actually looking in here to make sure that I knew exactly where you come from so that I wasn't like saying the wrong country and you don't have it listed. So, <laughs> uh, but when we do translate across languages, even words that we understand in English do not necessarily translate. So that's my guess is that it's not necessarily the exact, more French and Spanish, okay. Yeah, I get I get the point of making it as again the our language doesn't always translate easily. 
um, which could be very difficult. But I still think there is a way to. I think I still think if you have a friendly demeanor, um, or even ask more, or even ask questions, actually speak to someone like you know i'm non-binary and that's i'm still I'm, I'm now working with a few people who've come up to me and said they've never worked with someone who's non-binary and you know they they get me um you know i was working with someone from greek greece and you know they were asking me about my pronouns and how it works and stuff like that and it's just you know anything can be explained even if it takes a bit of time and just trying to figure out the right words to translate across Wow, it occurs to me now that that really makes me wonder exactly how it would work in a language that has masculine and feminine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the situ that's the situation here in Italy. So in Italy we have our we have masculine nouns and feminine nouns. So it's something so I'm I'm obviously not Italian. I'm from London originally. Mm -hmm. So when coming over here that, that took a bit of getting used to as well. So yeah, I can imagine that the conversations in Italian will become even more complicated. I, I mean, I imagine, that's what I was supposing. Hmm. I guess for non-binary, you could use a U instead of an A or an O, maybe? I don't know. I'm gonna have, I wanna look into that now. <laughs> How would you do that across languages that specifically have masculine and feminine? Actually, that might be a little bit too much for me right now. We'll just focus on this first, this first, and then we'll let my head explode later trying to figure out the rest of it. Okay. Is there another slide in here? No, no that's the last slide. Um, okay. Basically, yeah, I was gonna. The idea was I was gonna teach it, and then depending on who showed up, because if, if you guys came as a regular group, it would it make it would make a lot of sense when you see the whole thing. If that makes sense, because mm -hmm. uh, again, it, the idea is. So yeah, like I, will, next, I will certain. Sorry, what you I will certainly try. I was going to say I will certainly try to be here for your subsequent um presentation I, I will try my best to attend oh that's very nice um but yeah so basically the idea is we look at it as a little group um because again the more topic the more slides i go into later on the more it, like it'll it'll start to make sense what i'm talking about um, and then, like at the, at the very last slides, like reflecting over everything that we've learned, or you know, just general, the general idea of the lessons. Okay. Well, then we'll work on getting that next one scheduled, uh, and you guys will be able to all catch it here at Ashla Cafe, which is um, actually run by. I, I'm just the the employee, the uh, manager and owner of, of this Zoom is a very good friend of mine named Sarah. Justita is her Jedi name that she is claiming now. Uh, but yeah, so I, I want to say that this is hers. She uses the platform, but I have the ability to use it. So we'll, we'll figure out a date and time that is not conflicting with the schedule that she has in mind or what other people have in mind. And uh, we'll move forward from there and I'll get the times right this time because <laughs> I was an hour off today and I was in the pool, which is why my hair is all wet when <laughs> I found out that my hours were wrong. <laughs> but seriously, everyone, thank you for coming. And thank you. thank you, Ahsoka. I'm looking forward to the rest of your classes. <laughs> um, you'll see PowerPoints early and then you'll get, a, you'll see it, you'll make a lot more sense too because I'll email the rest of it just now. Okay, awesome. Um, but I just want to say thank you everyone for turning out. Um, and I'm hoping with the classes, my 
teaching ability with this kind of topic gets better because um, I know it's something I need to work on but I'm hoping by the end of this class uh, you'll at least want one thing that's what I'm hoping but thank you very much for everyone coming and may the force be with you all and also with you also with you <laughs>